In this video, I am going to explain you how to answer these nine most frequent questions on k-means clustering. Okay, and I am not going to tell you any bookish answer or that you get on the internet. Rather, I am going to tell you how to sound professional, how to sound an efficient data scientist. Okay, so what and why of k-means? People will ask you this to check your understanding of if you know how k-means work. Then they will check k-means versus k-means plus plus and how to choose k. If you see these three things, right, these three things will come in the category of how k-means works, okay, basically. And then from the application point of view, I have some six questions here. Assumption of k-means, categorical data and k-means. How do you validate the cluster? Pros and cons, obviously. Why elbow looks like an elbow and why do you need to do scaling in k-means, okay? So all these things we will try to answer and all these will be from application of k-means point of view. So as you know, k-means is a very, very common algorithm. Many people use it. Why, uh, what and why of k-means, right? So just to give a little, you know, um, starting point about this. So what is k-means? K-means is basically a segmentation or clustering algorithm. For example, if I take, for example, A's and on y-axis, I take, for example, salary. Okay. And here in the green, I plot some, let's say, female. And in, you know, this color, I plot some male data. Then maybe we can have two segments. So this is about, you know, people, female segment. This is about male segment. So this is one kind of clustering I'm trying to create. But basically, it is not this simple. Okay. So K-means clustering application. How we do is all these data points, what will happen is when the clustering starts, right? All these data points, if you say I want two clusters, for example, in this case, if you say I want two clusters, it will choose two centroids, any two random points as centroids. Okay. And it will try to assign, for example, let's say this female is one centroid and this male is another centroid. Okay. So this is centroid one and this is centroid two. So all the remaining data points will start getting assigned to these centroids. For example, this one get assigned to centroid one. This one will get assigned to centroid one. From here, some nearby points will get assigned to centroid two. So once all the assignment gets completed, this is called one iteration and centroids get shifted in the next iteration. So I'm just telling you at high level how k-means clustering work. If you want to know more detail, there is a video I have explained in too much detail about how k-means clustering work, okay? This is about working of k-means clustering. Now, why k-means clustering? K-means clustering is a very popular, very old unsupervised machine learning technique, and hence it is very famous. And that is why, you know, in many scenarios, it works well. So that is the reason why k-means clustering, okay? You, you want to learn about more details of what and why, please watch that video guys, okay? I will be discussing more towards what interview questions will come, okay? K-means versus K-means plus plus. So as I told you guys, here in the first step, right? This centroid C1 and C2 are randomly assigned, okay? C1 is one, one random data point chosen and C2 is one random data point chosen, okay? In the beginning. And what happens after that? All the points get, you know, uh, get started assigned to C1 or C2. So what happens is if you randomly choose centroid, right, then the convergence of your cluster or meaningfulness of your cluster may not be that good in the initial iterations. And what happened, what may happen due to that is your convergence will be very, very time consuming and resource consuming. So in place of initializing C1 and C2 randomly, can I choose C1 and C2 with some common sense so that it makes more sense? And the answer of that question is yes, and that is what k-means plus plus does. So what is the difference between k-means and k-means plus plus? In k-means, centroid assignment in the beginning is uh, random. In k-means plus plus, centroid assignment is not random. Centroid assignment is in such a way that it helps the algorithm to converge faster. Okay. How to choose optimal number of k? Now, guys, don't try to give, you know, bookish answer of elbow curve, etc. Okay. For some of you, um, I'm not saying it's a wrong answer. On one axis, you will have within cluster sum of squares. On other axis, you have you will have number of clusters, right? And if somebody asks you how to choose optimal number of cluster, you will say that, hey, you know what? There will be an elbow like this. And here, let's say three clusters. Here, let's say four clusters. And here, let's say two clusters. Here, let's say one cluster. I will say that three or four is my optimal number of cluster. Fine, nothing wrong in this. If you are a fresher, I will accept your answer. But 
if you are little experienced in data science you have to make more sense okay let me tell you how so uh, you can start with this you can start with the elbow as your baseline approach you can say that okay elbow is there uh, we will we will have a look at the elbow but at the same time in many business scenarios we don't get elbow okay we don't get the proper elbow and that's true also you don't get proper elbow in many business scenarios okay what you do then then you you reach out to business and ask hey how many clusters do you think make sense for your model okay for example i gave you this male female example here right now um uh, let's say let's let's say i'm let's take an assumption that in an organization you know females are paid less okay just an just an assumption and males are paid more so if i ask to the organization hey i'm trying to create cluster of male and female how many clusters should i have so somebody from that organization can tell me hey you know what all the males are paid high and all the females are normally paid low so maybe you will have two clusters so what i had now i have some idea of how many clusters can i have similarly in a in a complex business scenario also suppose i ask you how many clusters of flipkart customer can be there so um, a business expert of flipkart can tell me something like hey you know what there are people who purchase in the discount season and there are a whole lot of people who purchase throughout the year there are a whole lot of people who are active only during the uh, big billion sale so there are different kind of people so can you consider like four kinds of people or four basket of people or four cluster so what i am coming here to say is some information has to come from business okay some information has to come from the business some information has to come from this uh, you know elbow curve or whatever you call it you may not get a elbow in real world okay and then you combine these things and and then you do try and test then also you do not finalize your number of clusters you do try and test you create you know with two you create with three you create with four and then you see if it is making sense at least on important parameters for example here i am talking about flipkart right so if if i tell you you know what create two clusters of flipkart people or i say create four clusters of flipkart people then in these four clusters right at least on important parameters from the business point of view whatever the important parameters are these guys should behave differently right for example your cluster were uh, your cluster one average order size average order size cannot be very similar to cluster two average order size neither to cluster three neither to cluster four okay so you have to see you have to take your elbow business inputs your own common sense your own past experiences and try to see what is making more sense and it's not very easy the most difficult part of k means is how to choose optimal number of k okay and that is how you have to answer in a you should sound like a reasonable data scientist you should sound like a scientist not like somebody who has memorized things and trying to spill it out no you have to sound like a scientist okay that will give a very good impression so this is about how part we have covered three things now assumptions of k means i am not sure if you know or if you don't know but k mean assumptions few things and first thing that k means assume is data is symmetric symmetric means kind of normally distributed which is in real world you know it does not happen normally okay and also it um, it assumes that your data is all numeric because distances are uh, distances are computed based on that like all right euclidean manhattan whatever you call it so it it makes sense for numerical data more but let me ask you guys you have been working in data science since many years now how many times you have seen that in your data set there will be only numerical columns there will be categorical columns right and if you have categorical columns then how do you make sense of it that is what i have included here in one more question what to do with categorical data okay but assumption basically these two assumptions only okay these two assumptions only and because of this only if you have more number of numerical features and if it if it is kind of symmetric you know um, it will give you a a decent cluster okay now what to do with categorical data in k means so one important thing to understand here guys uh, let let's consider age okay let's consider gender and let's consider salary okay so age let's say 21 20 20 21 gender male female male female okay salary let's say 10 20 15 10 now k means clustering is internally euclidean distance or manhattan distance right 
if i ask you compute the distance between this person one and this person two then what you will do 21 minus 20 whole square euclidean distance right 21 minus 20 whole square plus m minus f whole square you have to do but since it is a categorical variable so this does not make any sense now what is the option you can either convert it to dummy variables and you can create a gender male variable something like this gender male and you can say this is one this is zero this is one and this is zero okay but uh, just for the calculation purpose you can compute it but do you think it is making much sense no okay uh, if there are limited number of categories in your data you can still do this but it is not making much sense mathematically so if somebody asks you how k means clustering treat categorical variable you can say that categorical variable does not have a natural origin there is no origin from where you can compute the distance okay and hence categorical variable do not make much sense in k means we can dummify and we can create but still that's not a uh, recommended way you can say or that's not a logical way of going about it so what is the answer um, how we can do it there is k modes you can explore a little bit more about this okay this allows you to do few things around the categorical variable but still um, it may not work very well if you have a mix of categorical and numerical variables okay so there is always a workaround that we have to find if there is some categorical variable which is not very meaningful take it out if there are some categorical variable which you can combine combine it but uh, try to keep it more of a numerical kind of data okay cluster validation cluster validation how do you do people will ask you this question in different ways for example sometimes i ask in interview uh, what is accuracy of your k-means clustering so that you uh, you know i want to check if you know that accuracy cannot be computed for unsupervised machine learning algorithms here the scenario is same same you cannot say that my k-means clustering is you know my model is 70 percent accurate or my model is 80 percent accurate you cannot say like this because it's a unsupervised machine learning algorithm all these things you have to say very confidently in the interview that's the intention of this video guys okay say very confidently it's it's a unsupervised machine learning i cannot have a number for the accuracy interviewer will get impressed believe me and then interview will ask you um so uh, do we leave it as it is i mean there should be some way to validate cluster right so i'm sure you you have heard of something known as dunce or duns whatever you pronounce it right index and i have uh, created video on these in detail the video i was talking about still hot score i think the spelling is correct okay so these these are few ways in which you can validate your cluster but not the normal accuracy you will get fine pros and cons of k-means clustering as i told you k-means clustering is not very well when it comes to more number of categorical data it will do good if you have numerical data k-means clustering is easy to work with easy to um, deploy easy to use simple to understand okay but resource intensive if you have more data and more features okay these are some of the pros and cons of k-means why elbow is elbow now this is something we must discuss in little detail okay why elbow is elbow why not any other curve for example you say that on one axis i have within cluster sum of squares on other axis i have number of cluster then why do you say that it will always be a elbow like this why it cannot be like this or why it cannot be like this parabola why it cannot be a circle you know any other s or circle why it will always be an elbow right so the answer to that is guys here you will have number of clusters right one cluster two cluster three cluster four cluster five cluster okay and it will go on increasing now when you have zero clusters right then every individual data point in your model is itself a cluster so within cluster sum of squares will be how much there is no other cluster okay so that that number can be zero there is no no data every data point is a cluster cluster one cluster two cluster three so distance of this point from this point is zero so within cluster sum of squares is zero second case if you have one cluster then all the data points will come in one cluster only so how many distances you have now distance of this from this right so there will be one centroid if we think this is the centroid then distance of this from this distance of this from this right so this will be highest number now suppose out of these four data points you break it and you bring two data points in a new cluster bottom two okay now in in the second one we will have one one distance here d1 
and other distance here d2 now if you observe guys d1 will be less and d2 itself will be less previous distance see these distances these are more right this distance this distance these are more but new distances d1 and d2 both are small distances even if you square it and sum it right that number will come low so in one cluster your your that value within cluster sum of squares is highest in second it will come down obviously in third it will come down further in fourth it will come down further and so on and so forth and hence we start getting a curve like an elbow curve okay that is the reason you have to tell it we we get elbow nothing else okay and what is the last one guys why scaling is important in kmit so this is also one thing that is related to distance so as i was telling you if you come in this one only age gender salary three columns right suppose salary is normally not 10 20 15 10 right it will be for example 10000 i will say i will say 20000 i will say 15000 and i will say 10000 okay and if i want to compute the you know euclidean distance between person p1 and person p2 right then 21 minus 20 whole square this we will take if we dummify or whatever we do and then i can say 10000 minus 20000 okay whole square now one thing you can understand here guys these two are on different scales okay so one unit shift in age is much shift than one unit shift in salary right percentage wise if you see which means these are on different scales so if your data is on different scale the meaning of your euclidean distance goes for a toss which means you have to necessarily scale your data otherwise it will not make sense okay so must scale your data before running game means clustering okay so all these things is not one one question it's like different things they can check okay let me know if you have faced this question in the interview and i told you how to answer this i hope this video is useful to you guys the reason i'm creating this video is i'm creating a question bank where there are five six videos already there people can refer to that before their interview and you know it will be very helpful okay please watch those two videos on kevin's that also will be very very helpful give me a thumbs up guys if you like this video please subscribe if you have not done yet i'll see you all in the next video wherever you are stay safe and take care